Officers, if you have a light bearing pistol, and I think you should, in a grappling contest, you have a significant liability you need to know about and train for. Hi everyone, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa. And I'm your co-host, Mike Wilber. Today's video comes to us from Ogden, Utah. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. Officers are responding here to a man who has punched a pregnant woman in the face and then run off. That's all they know about this guy, so we're gonna listen in on the officer's badge cam here. Stop, police! Stop, police, put your hands up! Stop, police! Put your hands up, man, we just need to talk. Stop, show me your hands. Let's just talk, okay? Keep your hands out of your pocket, please, all right? You wanna talk to me? Nope. Turn around for a second, sit down. Okay, sit down. Right. Two seven, we stopped. We're on the south end of Costco. All right, just turn around real quick. No, no, no. Yes. No. You're detained right now. Just shoot me. Quick, gonna shoot just you. Shoot me. No. I'm gonna make Stop. you shoot me. No. Yes. Why? Come on. Let's just talk. No. Just shoot me. Stop, dude. Just shoot me. Stop, please, dude. Let's talk. No. Sit down. What happened? Please. What happened? Please just here. Hands behind your back. No. Hands behind your back. Please just shoot me. Hands behind your back. Please. No, I'm not going to shoot you. Yes. Dude, come here. Let's just talk. I want to die. I'm suicidal. Okay. Uh, I can get you to the help. hospital. I, you want to go to the hospital? Yes. Okay, come here. Sit down. We're going to talk. Huh. Let's just sit right here, bro. We're going to talk. I think we're okay now. Here. Stop. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. No, just shoot me, please. We're gonna talk. Right? Please, just shoot no. me. Hands please. Me. We're gonna talk. Just shoot me. Hands behind just shoot me. No, we're not gonna. Yes. Talk. Shoot no. Kill me. I'll kill my fucking self. Stop. Hey, what do you grab? What do you grab? You got my gun. What? Let go of his gun. No, I'm gonna kill myself. Stop. Stop. Let go of his gun! Hey, we got another unit. Watch that, please. Stop! Get off it! Shots fired, shots fired. Stop! No, I'm gonna kill myself! They got this guy in custody. Nobody was hit by the bullet. The gun was in the holster when it went off. Uh, the perp is facing a corner plethora of charges out of this one. Turns out he was a felon before this ever happened. He's going to be a real felon afterwards, and we're going to think about lessons. Now, if you're ever over on our other channel, Active Self Protection Extra, you know I have no problem talking about good gear and not good gear. There is a particular significant gear issue here we're going to talk about in the lessons, but I want to say kudos to these officers for doing their very best to keep this guy alive. So Mike, as this guy approaches this dude who we know has punched a woman in the face, a pregnant woman no less, um, he's super soft and super easy on this guy. And, and I think that there's some, uh, something to be admired in that, that he's trying real hard not to use force, that he's not going way over the top on this guy, sees the fact that he's suicidal or he claims that he's suicidal. So he's trying to negotiate this guy into cuffs. But at some point you gotta say, no man, you're detained and you're gonna be arrested for assaulting someone. 
John, you can ask anyone from any agency I ever worked with or for about my style. And my style was to, the default was to be polite, friendly, personable. I find you draw more bees with honey than vinegar. There's a limit to that though. We, we do that until there's a point at which uh, it's not working anymore. And that point was pretty quickly here. Uh, I really, really would have liked to seen him OC this guy almost right off the bat. As soon as he said, hey, do this, and he says no, he's shown a propensity for violence. He's a big guy. You're by yourself. There's a lot of factors that say, you know what, we're not going to play slap and tickle here. A little douse of OC, take a step back, let it do its thing, and he'll be a lot more cooperative. We don't end up getting into this knockdown, drag out foolishness. And, and tough to say, I get that he's not trying to use force. In 2022, he doesn't want to go to jail. He doesn't want to get fired. Now, the other officer coming in, on the other hand, I, I think he comes in hot. And, and Yeah, Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, he comes in a, a little bit that way because, but again, if I'm him and I see, hey, there's an officer here, he's standing, having a standing fight with this guy, he's not, you know, being super aggressive on the guy, but if, if an officer has his cuffs out, which he had his cuffs out maybe a little too early, now this guy needs to get on the ground right now, and so he's... He's coming in hot with the force. Yeah, let's talk about that, John. I'm glad you brought that up. So, um, Ellie out there uh, watching this, hopefully, and maybe maybe watching it during a briefing, during your training, please remember this one thing about this video. The handcuffs don't come out. They, they're not in your hands until you've already had the person at a position of disadvantage and you're able to apply the handcuffs. Having them in your hands before getting them under control is a detriment because at this point now, you've got something in your hands. You know what I mean? So it's going to be that much harder if he decides to break bad, decides to fight with you, in which case he did here. It's going to be a lot harder for you to stow those cuffs, do something with them. I also highly recommend having two sets of cuffs for that reason. If you do end up having to toss your one set of cuffs, you have a backup. Um, please, please, please. Cuffs don't come out until it's time to put them, actually put them on. I also want to point out in this particular one, if you could see here, this is why this gun went off. You can see the holes here. This is a light bearing holster. And so the trigger is not completely covered. The trigger guard's not completely covered. And that allows the perp to get his finger inside there when they're wrestling over the gun. We see this problem. This is a problem with light bearing holsters. I've seen one uh, design that, that doesn't, it isn't beloved for other reasons in that, <clears throat> but Having a fully covered trigger guard, if you don't, this is what can happen. We've seen it happen multiple times on the channel that the gun actually goes off when the gun is still fully in the holster because it is, you know, the, the trigger is exposed and not fully covered. Now, I think the officer does a good job here of keeping his gun in his holster. The guy wants to kill himself with the officer's gun, and he does a pretty darn good job of not allowing him to do that, but the guy's able to get a trigger finger inside there, and this is the point where the gun goes off. Okay, you're still in a fight. And actually, Mike, I think when you're in a fight with a guy for your gun, the gun has gone off. You're not bleeding like crazy. Cool. Now the gun's not a factor anymore because it's not loaded anymore. It's got a dead round in the chamber. And so now I can really fight this guy. A couple of things, John. First of all, this right here is why you need to have some ground grappling skills and you have to train your butt off on gun retention. Gun retention training should be one of the most physically arduous things you do in the academy and an in-service. So you gotta make sure you know how to keep a hold of that gun. So John, as you said now, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because sure, the gun's dead and it's out of the equation, but in the off chance this guy produces something else or whatever, you've gotta remember, if you're in this unlikely scenario, that your gun now is out of battery and you'd have to cycle it to get it to work. So just something to think about, keep in the back of your mind, but please, 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 make sure you're practicing gun retention and your ground grappling skills, because they will, be all the difference in the world in you surviving an incident like this. And in truly, truly uh, resistive environments. Now also, he got on the phone, he got on the radio and said shots fired. Look, man, the cops are not gonna, nobody else is gonna make it. Win the fight you're in, don't get a hand out of the fight to get on your radio. He does come and use the taser here, and I'm gonna give him a hard time about this one, Mike. Now, okay, he uses the prongs, and you can see he's got two prongs in, but those prongs, of course, don't have enough spread. You've gotta get 12 inches of prong spread in order to get neuromuscular incapacitation with a conductive electrical weapon. But lots of big words there. For the taser to work, it has to have 12 inches between the prongs. But he has the drive stun too. So the, the uh, third point of contact, which is the taser itself. Okay, you've got two bolts in the guy. Stick another one in his, you know, in his thigh or in his butt cheek. And it will lock him up tight if you know how to do that. And I don't think enough officers, we, we've seen a, plenty now that they're not getting enough training with the taser to know how to use it. That drive stun could have locked this guy up and got it d over a lot sooner. Yeah, for sure, John. You and I have a mutual friend as a deputy uh, here in Arizona, and he's had a number of, of taser uses. And he likes to say, look, the taser is the perfect 
less lethal weapon when applied properly. And that means a lot of things. One of them is your appropriate distance away. You know, the person isn't zigging and zagging. You can actually get both darts on. But in this case, it could have been used better and might have ended this a little bit sooner. And from what I understand, if you've got prongs in, uh, for some reason, the butt cheek, all that fatty material, it really it lends itself to uh, getting the maximum amount of, of, of voltage through the person and, and disabling them uh, more effectively than perhaps any other part of the body. Yeah, and, and just getting enough distance between the prongs so that it starts locking up muscles is really where you're at. Okay, they finally get this guy into custody. I'm really glad that he lived through this day. I, you know, obviously, you'd much rather have him sure. have another opportunity to to you know, deal with his mental problems and hopefully learn not to be a violent felon. Okay, great. I think Officer Friendly, uh, man, I get it that he wants to do that, but at some point you gotta be ready to fight and, and ready to take this guy into custody. And then know, know those weapon retention skills and those grappling skills, because you're gonna need them. And when you need them, the guy's not gonna play nice with you. And so you might even have to worry about that. I do think having a, a retention holster that completely covers the trigger guard is important, but man, you got to know how to how to actually use your hands and feet and grapple in this case. So a little bit of jujitsu could have gone a long way here. In the end, got this guy in custody. Nobody else was harmed. I don't think the officer is at fault at all for the discharge. I'd say they covered their ass.